This video is sponsored by Brilliant.org. In this Starship update, SpaceX performs the first full-scale cryoproofs and propellant loading tests, Booster 7 completes assembly, and we get a glimpse of future vehicle improvements as a new dome prototype was spotted. Hey everyone, this is Ian Atkinson with NASA Spaceflight, here to give you an update on SpaceX's Boca Chica facilities as of mid-March 2022. It's been another exciting week at Boca Chica. On March 15th, SpaceX stacked Ship 20 atop Booster 4 using the chopsticks for the second time. However, this stacking was interesting because several parts of the vehicle stabilization system had been removed. This claw-like structure on the quick disconnect arm grasps the top of the Super Heavy booster, ensuring that the stack is stable in case of strong winds. The structure was removed earlier in March for an unknown reason. However, SpaceX may have worked around this issue by simply keeping the chopstick arms attached to Ship 20 after it was mated to Booster 4. While fully stacked, the two vehicles achieved a first in the Starship program, the first full-stack cryoproofs. Up to this point, no major testing had occurred on a full Starship stack. There had been several booster-only cryogenic proofs, including another one on March 2nd. But on March 16th, just one day after stacking, Booster 4 and Ship 20 were loaded with a small amount of liquid nitrogen for a cryogenic proofing test. This was not a complete filling of the tanks, but was rather a shorter, less intensive test. But it was not just a test of the vehicles, it was also a test of the ground support equipment. This was the first time that a Starship was loaded with any cryogenic liquid while atop a booster. This allowed SpaceX to ensure that the piping and equipment on the tower and quick disconnect arm all worked properly. During the test, both Starship and Super Heavy performed some major venting, which was a cool new sight to see. Following the test, both vehicles were detanked of liquid nitrogen and safed. Another similar test occurred on March 18th and seemed to be a success as well. In a tweet with some awesome pictures included, SpaceX referred to the March 16th test as full stack propellant load testing. This may indicate that the vehicles were actually loaded with propellants, meaning liquid oxygen and liquid methane, but this is unclear. Ship 20 was destacked from Booster 4 on March 20th. This likely marks the end of testing for the duo as newer and improved vehicles are almost complete. This will likely include Booster 7, which finished tank assembly inside the high bay on March 10th. This booster debuts several changes over previous ones. Booster 7 will be able to be fitted with 33 Raptor 2 engines, compared with Booster 4, which can only support 29 Raptor 1 engines. Raptor 2 is more powerful, cheaper, and easier to build than Raptor 1. Also, Booster 7 features a liquid oxygen header tank on the top of the engine mount. This tank will hold dedicated propellant for the landing burn, so that SpaceX won't need to worry about propellant sloshing in the main tanks affecting the burn. But what's a booster without a ship to launch on top? Just next door, Ship 24 is being assembled inside the mid-bay. It is currently believed that this ship, debuting some of its own upgrades, will fly atop Booster 7. Like Booster 7, Ship 24 will support the new Raptor 2 engines. In addition, the vehicle will feature a payload bay, the first for any Starship. It's currently not clear if Ship 24 will carry any active payloads on its flight, but the mystery got deeper when a rectangular structure was installed into its payload bay, aka nose cone barrel. This structure could be a payload adapter for Starlink satellites, however, that has not yet been confirmed. Parts for future ships have been spotted as well. The engine section for Ship 25 was flipped on March 15th and Mary caught a glimpse at the new design for the Raptor vacuum supporting structures. There are now supports inside the tank, which were not seen previously. Another aft section was flipped, however, this was for a booster. What is believed to be Booster 8's engine section was flipped on March 13th, and again, Mary was able to get a nice shot at the upgrades. The bottom of the liquid oxygen header tank is visible in the center and the myriad of pipes and structures needed to service 33 engines can be seen throughout. 
This really is a beefy piece of equipment, and it has to be, to withstand over 7,000 tons of thrust. Booster 8 has already begun assembly, with the forward dome section moved into the high bay for stacking on March 11th. This booster will likely fly with Ship 25. The likely header tank for Booster 8 was also seen on March 18th. Notice how it seems to be made up of two smaller rings of similar design to Starship's main tanks. Parts for Booster 9 have also been spotted, such as its common dome section, which was sleeved on March 10th. A new style tank dome was spotted on March 16th. This dome is flatter than the old design and is only made up of one style of panels. Elon previously mentioned flatter domes as a future upgrade. These would enable more payload space and or larger tank volumes, since the top of the domes wouldn't stick out as far from the tanks. This design will likely be quicker and easier to build, as it is only made up of one style of panels. Also at the production site, the wide bay is getting even taller. Crews began installing the sixth level of wall segments. However, these are much shorter than the previous segments. These may be the last section before the roof is installed. This upper area may be another high bar, like the one at the top of the existing high bay. At the back of the production site, a large amount of dirt work and laying of electrical conduits is ongoing, likely to build a permanent factory building. This could be similar in design to the factory under construction at SpaceX's Roberts Road site at Kennedy Space Center. Check out our most recent flyover video for more info on that. At the port of Brownsville, SpaceX's soon-to-be-converted oil rig, Demos, was moved out to head to Pascagoula, Mississippi for renovations. This decommissioned oil rig, along with its twin named Phobos, will eventually be converted into floating launch and landing platforms for Starship and Super Heavy. However, Elon has stated several times in the past that they are not a very high-priority project at the moment. Finally, at the Brownsville Airport, Nick spotted a neat new display. A Starship forward flap has been put up on display, mounted on a vertical pole. However, pay close attention to the scratching and the crushed portions. This is no unused flap. It actually flew on Starship SN8 in December 2020. In photos captured after the crash, this fin can be seen relatively intact on the side of the crushed nose cone. This is a great monument to the progress Starship has made, as well as SpaceX's positive economic impact on the greater Brownsville area. If you want to learn more about how exactly rockets, orbital mechanics, or general scientific principles work, then check out today's sponsor, Brilliant.org. Brilliant is a website that allows you to learn interactively at your own pace. They use examples, diagrams, and simple questions to help guide you through topics. And if you get one of those questions wrong, or just want more information, there's always a detailed explanation on how to find the answer. I've been working on their scientific thinking course, which gives an easy to understand general overview of scientific principles. There are even hands-on diagrams of the concepts, which have helped me understand the topics much faster. You can check out Brilliant for free at brilliant.org slash NASA Spaceflight. The first 200 viewers to use this link will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. And that's all for this video. Be sure to check out our most recent flyover of SpaceX's Roberts Road facility, where they'll be building starships at Cape Canaveral. Thanks for watching and have a great week.